Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel, and welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, Realizing Smart Cities Potential with CEO from SmartPoint, Eric Hornsby. Eric, welcome to the show. Hey, Darren, thanks for having me. Hey, Eric, I got really excited when I first heard about what you guys do. And when I talked to you the first time, I says, I got to have Eric on the show because this is really cool what you've been doing. But before we dive into the fun stuff, well, this might be fun too. Give me a little um, bit on your background. Yeah, happy to. So um, I'm Eric Hornsby, uh, obviously with SmartPoint IO. I've uh, got a long tenure in the data center and more recently digital signage space. We've been working with Intel Corporation for quite some time, uh, have a very strategic relationship there around uh, market ready solutions and other go to markets um, that we've benefited from mutually with Intel. Uh, but you know, myself, I, I have a lot of passions around uh, project management, technology, deployment and operation, all things that fall within you know, the bounds of SmartPoint IO. We, uh, as a team, most recently were part of an LG Electronics joint venture uh, company where we deployed outdoor digital signage, primarily for advertising applications in dense urban areas, transit venues, um, city streets, what have you. And we learned a lot about really other applications in those environments that uh, compute resources and other forms of connectivity would help enhance the experience brought on by the Internet of Things. So SmartPoint was really born out of that ecosystem and a, and a desire to, to work with that market space and drive uh, advancement and uh, opportunity there. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on something. You said you started in the data center. Is that That's right? correct. All right. What in the world are you doing out in digital signage? Because going from data center into digital signage, those are like diametrically opposed, I, right? I, I so you got to tell me how you got there. It, it was an interesting transition. So I was uh, part of a company that was a, what we would call a life cycle management or life cycle solutions company in the data center space. So we helped companies optimize servers, storage and network hardware from a, an acquisition and a refresh cycle standpoint and everything in between. And uh, my role was very focused on helping uh, the channel of companies that sold those solutions, but also how they were purchased, how they were financed, and then how those assets were depreciated over time. So in, in that role, I learned quite a bit, not just about the technology we were selling, but how people were using it and how they were you know, really managing that, that value as an asset on their balance sheet. Fast forward to... Uh, really 2015, I had an opportunity to do some consulting for uh, a company in the digital signage space. They had just signed a partnership agreement with LG and with LG being a, a channel led uh, go to market company, I was able to, to help with some advice and some market direction there, as well as standing up some new uh, financial uh, models that that company went to, went to market with. And you know, fast forward several years, it turned into a, a full time opportunity uh, that I was time. Wow. happy to accept. And anyway, the rest is history. Okay, so you're the first finance guy I've had come on. Just so you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so this will be really interesting to hear the because you've come up with something I think is really creative with what you guys are doing, and it is how do I actually make IT technology real in our cities. We've been talking about smart cities for what, a decade sure. now, right? But the cost of it and managing it, all, there's a lot involved in really creating a real smart city and using it. I thought, I think it's pretty brilliant. Your financial background and you understand all this stuff. Tell me, tell me what vision you have as far as smart cities go. And because when you first mentioned this to me, I was like blown away. Thought it was pretty, pretty clever. So when when and there's a lot of talk of smart cities and 
depending on or smart communities, connected community infrastructure, there's a lot of, of really synonymous terms, but some of the major tenants you're, you're going to hear are uh, smart cities are resilient. Um, smart cities are equitable. And, you know, they're, they're really much like, and from my perspective, much like an IT department would look at how they're serving their company to do, to do better, to be more efficient, uh, cost effective, what have you, help, help a company be resilient. Cities are very similar uh, from the public services that they provide, uh, whether those are roads and bridges, public safety, um, environmental, uh, you know, cleanliness, what have you. Sometimes water, sewer, right? Yeah. All those things. So when we think about the base, the basics that a, a municipality brings to their citizens, visitors, commercial tenants, as technology, technology has evolved, some of those basic uh, things are starting to include connectivity and the ability to access compute and for different city services to be able to take advantage of advancements in technology to do a better job of those same basic, you know, providing a safe, uh, less congested from a traffic standpoint uh, environment that's also resilient. So getting back to the financial modeling, resiliency from our perspective also uh, needs to mean economic sustainability. We're in a, a, an amazing time right now, a historic time in terms of funding that's being made available for infrastructure projects. And that's been like from IIJA, right? Correct. And being able to deploy that funding in ways that is resilient and economically sustainable is a major tenant of what SmartPoint's doing when we partner with SIMS. You're looking at financial resilience, which no one ever looks at. I've never heard financial resilience in the IT space before, but I like I like this approach because I can I can throw hardware and I you know I work at Intel. I want everyone to refresh their hardware every three years. Right. But realistically, that's not doable with the budgets that cities have or states have uh, to do that. Yep. Right. We we took a, a real hard look at the space that we were you know previously in, which was very narrow in digital signage, primarily for advertising. And there's a tremendous amount of revenue generated in that market space. We all know some of the largest companies in the world are primarily funded by advertising revenue. Yeah, Google, for example. For example. And, and you know, one of the, the primary, you know, products or resources there are the people who are being advertised to. Their information, their likeness, their, their traits. And, and these, you know, layer on what's called attribution, which incre increases the value of the advertising, making more money. So taking a look at that as a, a focus revenue stream or ROI for cities to harness, cities have a, a treasure trove of value in the real estate and the, the people and the commercial entities and visitors that reside within that real estate. So being able to more effectively leverage that real estate to generate revenue, but align it directly with uh, solutions that produce outcomes that are meaningful to what the city should be providing to its citizens, visitors, and commercial tenants is really at the core of what we're doing. And being on board to operate a network like that and manage that from a not just a technology, but a financial operation standpoint is, is really what's getting it's getting cities more to a point where they can not just comfortably, but confidently move forward with, with projects that are, that are meaningful and, and substantial to your point. How do we get this technology out into the, the city? It you know, requires uh, help from the private sector and it requires uh, a willingness to work together from the public sector. Right, all right, so explain exactly. All right, so I, li I like the idea, right? How can we get hardware, new technologies into the cities, but it's costly? So we can. You're saying that we can fund it actually through advertising. Is that the concept? Advertising is a major source of the revenue. Uh, other sources are that cities spend a tremendous amount of money to provide the basic services that 
are delivered by a municipality to its citizens. So being able to tap into those budgets as well allows for a financial model that really raises the tide across all those boats from providing safer transportation to you know greater returns on advertising. When you can tie the, the advertising benefit back to the people who are advertising to, that's what gets us really excited and gets us and gets the city interested because you, you are creating a, a circular economy that allows for that, that uh, resource in the people in the real estate to be harvesting that value more efficiently. So it's almost it's almost uh, like keeping it more local yeah. in a lot of respects, right? Absolutely. Um, which is which is pretty cool because now I can keep that that uh, economy in my in my city growing instead of it growing outside of my city. Yes, um, that's the idea. Oh, it's pretty pretty cool. All right, so explain the explain the technology a little bit. We got a little bit of the business model. Explain what what does this look like physically? So. Going from a data center background, which is very centralized in nature, to a digital signage on sidewalks, it's a very decentralized, so definite opposite ends of the spectrum. And combining what we do from a technology standpoint is we're really combining operational technology, which definition would, would fall into really things that you're touching, seeing, you know, experience. Right, physical, physical things you're interacting exactly. with, right? We were combining that with, with IT information technology that you normally wouldn't see, but having it there. And the reason we're doing that is because this explosive growth in the Internet of Things and data being produced at the physical edge of the network creates an opportunity for the physical edge of the network to be a, uh, a place where computation takes place. So that data not having to go all the way back to uh, a large data center somewhere the workload be processed, and then that insight from whatever you know you're trying to garner has to be sent all the way back to the edge. You can you can do it right there again, keeping it local as a as a tenant of what we're doing. But ed edge computing is a, a major part of our our product, and utilizing that edge computing to produce outcomes for things that are focused on doing better at the edge. Okay, so what I just heard was. Your digital signage is not just a pretty box, a pretty box with advertising on it. Yeah, I can actually run compute in those in those uh, digital signs that you have on the sidewalk. That is correct. Yeah. It's, um, so it's like a, a portable data center. Does anyone like throw it in the back of their truck and take off with it? <laughs> you'd you'd need to have planned uh, pretty far in advance. There. Pretty far in advance to do yeah. that. Yeah, there, we we've uh, over the course of. The past six six or seven years, we've deployed tens of thousands uh, of these around the world for digital signage purposes. Um, but we've gotten pretty good at making sure they stay. They stay. Yeah, that's good. So, what what sorts of workloads can I run in these digital sign signage boxes? So, well, one of the the types of data that we talk about a lot is video data. So, there's there's cameras everywhere, and cameras are watching for things like abnormalities in traffic patterns. They're looking at cars. They're analyzing how many bicycles are on the road with the cars and, you know, focusing on how, how could we make things safer or better? Um, and there's, but optical data from video is, is extremely bandwidth intensive. And so trying as, as anybody knows that's tried to stream something on their mobile device, uh, you need to have a great connection to, to pull that off. But if you could, you could cache that, if you could store that video or process it locally, then you've reduced the amount of data transport necessary uh, to garner a, uh, an outcome. So running computer vision um, analytics at the edge is one of the things that we, we do quite a bit of. All right. So that decreases the total bandwidth that you need because you're not going to stream 4K video anymore. You're just streaming object data that you've detected. Yep. Right. So I... So that gives me traffic pattern flows. That gives me weather, right? There's a whole bunch of things that these boxes can then use. It's basically a IoT node out there that can do a lot of different things. If we had a 
break it down to three, three things. I would say it does a great job of uh, reducing latency. So which would be the time it takes to, to move that data, process it and produce the insight. Um, just, and that's just simple physics, right? It's less, right. less uh, distance for it to travel. Uh, that, that same outcome reduces cost because you're not having to transport that data um, as far. And the third really hones in on privacy. So being able to... Ooh, I, I would have thought the opposite there. I would have thought, what's your privacy angle on this? Because, oh, I got a camera watching everyone. And so what's your privacy angle on this? Yeah, I mean, again... It's counterintuitive to me. Being, being able to uh, use that camera data, I'll call it behind the radio. So it's not traveling over public IP allows for uh, analysis at the point of capture. So we're not, we're, we're not sending pictures of Eric Hornsby across the pipe back to a data center somewhere being uh, observed and, and having several hops, let's call it, where uh, oh, gotcha. security needs to be tracked. Instead, it's saying there's a guy walking down the street. Yep. Yeah, and the, and the data is able to be scrubbed or anonymized much earlier in that you know, analysis cycle before it even leaves the box. Yep. Very cool. Now, what else can I do with these things? I, we talked a little bit about, I can put like a 5G, I, I can turn this into a 5G hotspot or a Wi-Fi hotspot as well, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So again, it's it's working with cities to identify what commercial revenue streams, you know, could we generate together at, at these real estate endpoints and how could we operate a project from a financial standpoint that also brings to bear uh, different technologies like 5G, as you just mentioned, or CBRS or Wi-Fi. There's lots of, we call them underserved areas that would love to have yeah. better connectivity. The cities would love to provide that as a, a basic deliverable from the municipality. And those are things that we bundle into these, these projects. Uh, very cool. Now, all right, so how does this work um, cause we talked about this a little bit, um, bef before the show, mm -hmm. how does it work if I'm a municipality, I, I contact you guys, you go and deploy these signs, um, in down my main tent, main street, Folsom, what's that's where I live, Folsom, California, main street, Folsom. We put like three or four of these up and I now as the city, I maintain these things. I get the advertisers or. Is it a joint venture with you guys? How does how does operationally how does it work for me? Because it sounds like I'm going to have to staff up people that understand IoT and data center and maintain these things. So we we have a team that monitors and operates the technology, just like a, a data center would for a company. We so we we are the operator and we work with the city. So where the city would have had departments that are leveraging IT infrastructure, perhaps somewhere else. Now our joint project becomes that IT infrastructure that they are, they can use. From an advertising perspective, we partner with the existing out of home media uh, advertisers. So there's lots of incumbents out there who are very interested in upgrading their technology or migrating from what's called static paper poster advertising to digital. And we're a great partner for, for that in its own right, because we come in with all of the upfront CapEx funding, we deploy the technology. And now instead of selling uh, a static poster advertisement, the ad incumbent advertiser has the opportunity to work with us and to start selling digital. So it's a great uh, opportunity for uh, a refresh and a significant upgrade to the incumbent out of home the companies out there. So, so this is interesting. So if I'm a city now and, and I decide, Hey, we, we really want to do this digital sign. There's so many questions in my head right now. One is you guys, it, you guys are, you guys are now like a normal billboard, just a digital sign. So you're getting the revenue from the advertising that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the city is allowing you to put that there and they're getting some cut of something. I'm sure whether it cycles on, uh, you know, how do I put my applications on there that, cause you said, Hey, you said we can use the data center part of this to do things. Mm -hmm. How do I pay for that? Or do I get a cut of that? What, how does that all work for just, does, does that make any sense? What I'm trying to get to Eric? Sure. Yeah. So the, the term that's often used, I'm going to give you two terms. One is simple. It's revenue share. 
So when I hear okay, revenue share, all right. When I hear how do we get a cut of it, revenue share has been around for a long time, and yeah, cities. That's are very, an easy one for people to understand. Yep, but the the other term is paid in kind, and paid in kind will often be a, I would call it a form of revenue share, but instead of sharing just top line revenue that's thrown off from the project, we we uh, produce and operate resources like uh, IT infrastructure that the city can then use to process optical data at the edge. And that has a, an outcome that the city's, you know, desiring to see. Okay. So that's, that's pretty cool. So here's, here's a scenario that I think I would love to see downtown Folsom again, mm -hmm. that Wi-Fi is available for everyone downtown Folsom. Um, because that would be really cool if, Absolutely. Right. You know, on, on the weekends, they close down the main street and there's, Lots of fun things out there in restaurants, and it'd be great if Wi-Fi was available for all of downtown. So in this scenario, I put maybe four or five of your digital signages down there. Paid in kind means you're gonna you're gonna make sure that I have Wi-Fi that we put the Wi-Fi service in in the in the box, and that it's available to everyone uh, downtown. And I'm ready to go. Is that how? Yeah, that, yeah. and I mean, and Wi-Fi, I mean, requires. Uh, backhaul. So you need to have yeah. likely a, a fiber circuit terminated. So that's something that we stand up. We, you know, pay the ongoing cost of access to that fiber backbone as a effectively an edge ISP for the city. So we'll monitor, maintain, and, uh, and cover the cost of that. But we do that with the revenues that are generated by the digital signage um, that we're deploying. So that's, it's a great example and it's a simple example. Here's another question I have. Um, are, is your digital signage interactive? Yes. So could I have a map? So I can have a map of downtown on there. That would be standard. Uh, the vendors in downtown would put their little logos up there as, uh, you know, like, like you'd see at like an airport, for example. I can say I, I need to find a restaurant quick because, you know, I'm starving on my layover. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So th absolutely. They, they have a touchscreen interactivity. There's uh, applications called wayfinding is the commonly used term where, okay, yeah. uh, you know, easy to find city services, restaurants, other retail uh, shopping nearby. So they're very useful for that. And then, of course, offering access to that. Uh, via a portal to the city and to the commercial tenants there, it opens up a, a new opportunity for economic development for that local economy to reach uh, to reach the people walking around. No, I, I see. I, I'm already thinking calendar of events. All that stuff would show would show up right there. Yeah, oh, well, that's that's and it, it, yeah, it definitely becomes the new digital you know billboard, if you will, for events and things that people want to go see. What's new? What announcements are there? Uh, it's a way for the city to better engage with people. Well, and, and also gives me valuable information back, right? Because let's say I want to count how many people are downtown um, this weekend, right? Sure. And maybe I did some advertising for some event downtown. I want to see what my take was as far as not take. I want to see what the effectiveness of my campaign was to bring people downtown. These these cameras could easily count how many people are downtown. Of that course. would be an easy thing for them to do. There's so much potential here. Um, I, I love the model uh, because one of the biggest problems that we've seen with uh, smart cities is the cost of CapEx. Sure. And also the OpEx of managing managing this hardware once it's out in the wild. That's a, a big cost to cities. Um, and then the refresh cycle. <laughs> this is another one. I want you to, and Eric, I know you're going to refresh every every three years because we're going to have great technology and you're going to want it. So I know you're going to, I know you want our stuff every three years. The city, they're, they're under much more uh, constraints as far as, uh, as far as that goes. Yep. Well, and, you know, refresh cycle, I'll, I'll segue that into one of the, one of the challenges with, uh, I would say, new uh, industry. So IoT is still relatively new, certainly IoT at the edge. 
is is new. And investing in technology at this stage, you, you'd fall into what I'd call an early adopter category. Oh, it's expensive. Yeah. It's, well, it's expensive and there's there's risk. And anybody who oh, deals yeah. with municipalities would, would know that they, uh, they, they would prefer to de-risk <laughs> what they're doing. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, and, and so take, take, taking a chance on very expensive things doesn't always fall into uh, typical behavior of a city. So again, this is where uh, partnering with the, the private sector, where there is significant appetite for risk and know-how of how to operate infrastructure to gain reward is a great fit for municipalities to to, to hedge hedge their bets a little bit and to get out further out in front of where they may have been comfortable investing on their own. No, I I, I love the model. I think it's ingenious because it may just be the way that we can get smart cities to be real. Because um, there's so much potential to to having smart cities out there. Um, I, I I love the financial model. I think I think it's uh, pretty clever. So thanks. Well, and it's it, it, there's also a, it's a it's a great community out there. There's a lot of great events put on. We were just at the the Smart City Expo in Miami, and there's there's a lot of passion from these cities to trade uh, information and and share successes, learnings, uh, what have you. And so for us, when we're when we're talking to a city directly, we typically have two, maybe three topics we want to cover. Uh, the first is really looking at how how could we make the initiative you know financially sustainable. You've heard me say that a lot. Today. Oh yeah, yeah, no. But then every city we've talked to has something something unique that they're trying to solve for. No, no different than when you call on uh, businesses and yeah, you know, yeah. Or, there's always some little thing that's unique to them. Yep. Uh, so finding finding what that unique thing is that is top of mind that they need to solve for and they think there may be a way, that's that's usually where our focus lies. And then the third would likely be sharing a success from another municipality. But you can see has as you know, successes uh, you know, build on one another. So it's a, it's an interesting market space um, where we're learning new things, but it's an opportunity for uh, coming together and uh, and to build community, which is really what cities are about. Well, I, I'll tell you what, Eric, when you guys are the new Google for IoT, because uh, I think the model's pretty clever and I think it has a lot of potential to really grow this industry, which has been stagnant, frankly. I we we've been there's a lot of hope, but as you said, the the barriers to entry because of the risk of new technology and cost and OPEX and CAPEX, I think is limiting um its progression moving forward. And I like that you guys actually came up with a really cool solution to tackle this, a business solution to a technical problem. Thank you. So thanks a lot, Eric, for coming on the show. I appreciate the time. You bet. Thank you. It's great talking to you. Thank you for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you enjoyed our podcast, Give it five stars on your favorite podcasting site or YouTube channel. You can find out more information about Embracing Digital Transformation at embracingdigital.org. Until next time, go out and do something wonderful.